So hey there everybody, as always, welcome to the channel. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out for a few. I'm down on the lower right hand corner of your screen because we're gonna be looking at the screens a lot today. I need to let you know up front, this is gonna be a much longer video and I'm kind of treating it like, uh, like a live stream. You know, I'm not gonna be looking to edit a lot of this. I just wanna talk you through our regular process of building one of our presentation pages for one of our clients. So you've probably seen several similar videos here on channel. And for those of you who don't know, we also have an, another site, classes.azdrone.net, where I actually talk about how we package our deliverables together and present them on the web. So you can always check that out too. And we did put the little logo down there on the bottom for you. You can check that out. I'm literally going to take you through some of what we uh, did yesterday and I'm starting to do today. So yesterday, um, long weekend here, Labor Day weekend, and today's Monday, Labor Day. But um, we went out and flew our job site uh, as usual. We do it every other Sunday normally for the clients, keep everything consistent, and we keep all of our flights consistent. But in the end, what we're looking to develop is one of our presentation pages like this one from August 20th. So we've got one of the latest uh, shots just on location. We've got a video fly through identifying all of the items under construction. Regularly, we also do time lapses. And then we also have before and afters. And this is a big one that people ask about a lot. You know, hey, Rich, how do you make those before and afters? Well, doesn't that look like an ortho mosaic model? Yes, it does. So we overlay one ortho mosaic on another one. You're going to see some of that. Like I said, one more time, I'm giving you fair warning. This is going to be a long video. I might break it up into a couple of videos. But in the end, this entire process takes me a little while. And, you know, so we're not going to be we're not going to be doing a lot of little extras on here or any video extras. I'm just taking you through the process of what I do when we're done on a job site and then we need to start assembling things. So we also have our 3D site model and then we have our still image gallery. Now, our clients did ask for some additional flights this week. They have an engineer who wanted to see a couple of additional things. And the engineer also wanted some top down video. So shooting straight down. So that's going to be in there as well. Now, the first thing that happens, of course, is we went out and flew the site. I'm not going to bore you to death looking at the controller and watching the drone go from point to point. But instead, I will show you. So um, we finished our flights and I'm just let's get right to here and see. All right. So on the left hand side, we're looking at air data right now. So we did several flights. Let me see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine different flight paths. So the first one, we always start off with our orthos. We like to get those done first. By the way, this is all done with the Mavic 3 Enterprise this time. We still have some issues with the Mavic 3 Enterprise. I'll be updating in a later video about that as I'm still working through a whole class on it. But we did manage to get some of our flight paths transferred from Litchi over to the Mavic 3 Enterprise. Let's just call it the M3E. And we were able to execute with the M3E on our orthos so those were the first lights so we always go into a job site with a list of we're shooting this we're shooting this we do it in the same um in the same order every single time it makes it easy for me to match up all the data from week you know from every other week so first flight you see it right here on screen let's go ahead and take a look second flight so the first one was for our ortho and we were going east to west second one was north to south we did blend these together and they yielded over 400 and some odd images. The one thing I can really say for the M3E, it's fast. So, and everything is still very sharp. We're still working out some of the kinks with uh, with utilizing their flights, but we'll, we'll get it squared away. All right, after that, this is one of our most normal flight paths. So we do have several videos that follow a very similar flight. So we're done with those orthos. This is into our video capture now. So first one, we actually have uh, the drone at 98 feet above ground level. And then we move the drone out here and follow around. So there's a little bit of a down tilt and you can actually watch the videos and see that down tilt. Um, second one, very similar, but not quite the same. There's some subtle changes in this one. This one's actually flown at 35 feet or 30 feet above ground level. So from our launch point, so it keeps the drone much lower and we're actually shooting 
into the homes almost. So, so that was our second flight. Third flight is going to look exactly the same. However, on this third flight, we, instead of video, we capture a bunch of stills. By the way, just to let you know, the video quality from the Mavic 3 Enterprise, having it at 4K and everything, um, still isn't the greatest. There's a little bit of judder going through some of the video, um, and I'm still trying to figure that out. Fortunately, we can smooth a lot of that out uh, in post-production afterward. So next part, let's take a look. And this was actually a manual flight. So I actually did a little manual top down. So shooting 90 degrees straight down and shooting this video to answer one of the requests that the engineer on this project had. They just wanted to see things from a different perspective as they're considering um, as they're considering drainage issues, apparently. So they wanted to see that. And we also did do um, a pullback from the entire site and a shot down to show the overall build site, just something that the uh, developers wanted to see. So you will get clients who say, hey, could you do this this time as well? And um, these guys were awesome because they always say, hey, just bill us when you do something additional. So thanks, guys. Thanks for being really cool clients. And then this was just one more little test that I was doing afterward, um, trying to figure out my location in the world. But so everything starts when we get out to the job site. Everything starts with the orthos for us. So what does that look like? Let's go ahead and minimize this. And so, you know, once again, this is not going to be the most exciting one. And if I'm looking off here and there, it's not because I don't want to look at you on the camera. It's because I'm looking at the screen. So here's our solstice project, our newest set of flights, um, 21 solstice. I have a reason for the numbering here, but I also always do put in the labels for these as well. So September 3rd, ortho images. So as I said before, the orthos, we did east-west and then we did north-south. We're not really after a 3D model, although we do give the clients a 3D presentation. The thing they're more interested in is that before and after ortho. So coming into these, one of the other interesting things I will note with the Mavic 3 Enterprise is it does make folders for you. So the first flight for the east-west had its own folder where everything was stored in. And the second flight north-south also had its own folder where everything was stored in. So that's kind of cool, um, nice and labeled for me there, but then I simplify it. So there we go with the Solstice East-West, 206 images. And then the North-South here, another 203 images. So as I said, well over 400 images for this. And once again, with both of those flights, the Mavic 3 Enterprise did get everything done faster than one of those flights on my Mavic 2 Pro. So that mechanical shutter is actually awesome. So, um, but that's not enough to justify its cost and a lot of the missing features that are in there. Um, after we finish up, you know, after we do our original ortho models, we do our videos next. So it used to be to remind me the first block of still images was for orthos and then the first block of videos was for time lapse. But now that the Mavic 3 Enterprise is packaging everything for me in folders, uh, it does uh, make it easier to keep track of as well. So the Solstice September 3 video, here's an example of one of the files that, one of the folders, I should say, that come out of the M3E. So it was flying the mission, Solstice 98 feet. Hey, guess which one that is? Uh, and then the next one, Solstice 30 feet. Guess which one that is? And then the two random ones as well. So there's our video uh, for the day. So just one video capture there, one video capture there, and then a couple of extra. After that, we normally do our still images. So we collect all the stills and I reuse that flight path, Solstice 30 feet. And um, so I have a whole bunch of stills in here. And then I did some random stills just based on what the engineer had been asking about and what my clients emailed me about the other day. So, And just to give you one of the shots out of there, let's take a look at it. So this is just a pulled back one. Um, backing out above the other neighborhoods, off to the right, of course, Prescott Lakes uh, Country Club and Golf Course. And you can see the whole solstice area from here very well. Uh, it runs all the way down to this end and then comes back here. And so there's going to be another set of homes going in here and also out here. We still have more to fill in here and a couple more here. So we're going to be on this project for a little while longer, to be sure. Um, so there we go with all that. 
Uh, and the final thing that we're getting to test out this time around, so I'm just going to share this with you because it's random, unscripted, and this is this is part of my workflow. So when I plop down in the uh, studio, this is the kind of stuff I'm doing. One of the new things that we checked out yesterday that we hadn't tried previously was the 360 mode direct out of the M3E. So we had it take two 360 images. So you can see this. It is a little dark. Also, it was a little weird when we set this up to shoot and we set it up to shoot in the 360 mode. It put me on manual focus. It seemed to have taken things over, but it had it on the manual focus. So I was very concerned about that. We need to do some more testing with the 360s. Also, just to let you know, those 360s are JPEGs, but they do give you the folder for the originals too. So if you've got something like PT GUI that you want to stitch things together with, or other stitchers like the 3D Vista stitcher, you can take all of the images that I captured. See, I mean, this is pretty underexposed. I'm not a big fan, but we'll see what we can do with it. Jody will be editing those. But just to see, and uh, let's go ahead here. Let's put it into Affinity really quick. By the way, at any point along this video, I might stop, cut this so that it doesn't go too long on you, and we'll step into another section. So this might be a good section for me to, um, to stop at before we get into the orthos. So I'll make that call in just a few moments. But while we're here, I thought, let's go over to Layer. Let's go down to Live pro uh, Projection. By the way, this is Affinity Photo. I absolutely love Affinity Photo for working with my 360 images specifically. So, you know, I love the live projection here. And there we go. So there's the sun up in the sky. But look at this. We can pan fully around in our 360s. There's the helipad. And down below is us. <laughs> so, so we knew that that area is closed off right now. So we don't usually have vehicular traffic. And so we are just trying to center this and see where we're coming up in the world. So there's one of the model homes. And so we can see everything going on with that 360. Clearly, though, some exposure, highlights, shadows, a little tinkering with that will help out. Or maybe I'll find some additional settings for the 360. Don't count on it. You know, that's one thing I can say about the Mavic 3 Enterprise is who knows when we're going to see new firmware updates for this. Um, and additional software updates to correct for some glaring problems um, with the particular drone. So, all right, there we go. I'm going to close down Affinity, and I think what I should do here, don't save, is leave this as uh, part one of this series, and we'll jump back in in part two. This will all be up on YouTube, but we'll jump back in and start dealing with our orthos and getting everything ready for that final presentation. All right, yeah, let's do that. Let's break it up right now.